In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful and the most compassionate of Christ, due to Allah Almighty, Lord of the world, the entirely merciful and especially merciful. Uh, today I have just class and combination sentences. You know, the time which, I, which has been given to me is absolutely short. I will go a bit faster. Uh, inshallah, I will cover all aspects of the combination sentences. We have different types of conditions, but these are the base. Once we study the base, inshallah, those, those other conditions will be absolutely simple for us. The time is short, so I have to speak a bit faster and let's begin the class. Conditional sentences, before I give you the definition of the conditional sentences, I have to tell you about that. Why do we call these conditional? We call them conditional sentences because there is a condition in those sentences and there is a result which will be produced after that condition. And the condition can be written in the beginning of the sentence or can be written at the end of the sentence. That is how I will explain it, uh, given the examples. The definition of the condition sentences uh, are used to describe the real or hypothetical reasons of the real or hypothetical situations. When the situation is a real situation, that situation will produce a real reason as well for you in conditional sentences. And if the, if the situation is a real situation or hypothesis, it will give you a hypothesis, means the reason will be a hypothesis as well. It depends upon the situation. We have the zero, the first, second, third, and next conditional sentences with the four elabor further elaboration, which I will be giving examples. First, let's begin the class with zero conditions. Zero condition is a real conditional and it refers to things which are always true. And sometimes we say that the zero conditional sentences are used to you know, talk about the habitual actions. I'll give an example over there as well. But uh, uh, zero condition, let me first begin the zero condition with an example for the formation. You have to use if in the beginning of the sentence or when. If or when is used for the formation of the zero condition. And both sides should be simple present tense. You have to use simple present tense in if clause and use simple present tense, then you know the, the clause which produces the result. Like for example, uh, let me uh, just give you an example. If I drop the apple, if I drop the apple means uh, there once, keep in mind, if you use the if class at the beginning of the sentence and the reason after the further separation, you have to use a comma. If the result comes here and the condition, the if class goes over there, further separation, there is no comma. No comma is used over there. If I drop the apple, it, you know, falls. This is the example. The second example already is that if I pour oil in the water, it floats. Means comes at the top of the water and the uh, water will remain at the end of the glass. Next example, if I put a spoon in the glass, it sinks, means goes down to the water. It's a real conditional. It refers to the things which are always real. And how do we talk about the you know, habitual actions? If my father wants, or if my father wants TV, uh, and someone speaks to him, he never replies, he does not answer. Means that once he wants an action, a habit in the future or in the present, or if he wants, uh, he does not reply to that uh, you know, uh, question of the one who asks. It's a real condition, in zero. And the zero conditionals can be formed instead of this if we can use when as well. It's a real condition, we can use if or when. And next thing which is much more important in zero condition is that we can use the imperative sentences. And parallel sentences in zero conditionals can be used. In, can be used. Uh, the F class shows that uh, you know a hypothesis, a hypothesis, a hypothetical situation, and the imperative sentence will show that what should a person do when that hypothetical situation actually happens. For example, if you are hungry, let me write an example here. If you are hungry, if you are hungry. A condition. It's a condition. Means you're not hungry at the moment, you might get hungry in the future, but once that hypothetical situation occurs, what should a person do is the imperative sentence. The imperative sentence shows that what should a person do once that hypothetical situation happens? Eat something. Eat something. If you're hungry, eat something. If you're cold, put on a coat. You know, if you're thirsty, drink a glass of water or do something else. These are the conditional sentences in your form. And the first condition is a real condition that refers to the things which are in the future. The first condition refers to the future. And it's a real condition as well. Uh, let's make examples of the first condition. Keep in mind, the first condition uses the simple present tense and the simple future tense. But you might ask me that the future itself is not a real condition because the only real situation is the present situation, the future is not a real situation, it's unreal because we are unaware about our future, we do not have the knowledge of unseen, we do not know what will happen in the future, so how can you say that it's a real condition? But there is a point that when I make an example talking about the future, there is a possibility, there is the time I am alive, there is the time it might or might not occur, but there is a possibility 
talking about the future, this one I say it's a real condition. For the future, we have to, you know, hope there is a wish, there is a possibility we call this to be the real conditional. For the formation of the first conditional, we use simple present tense in the class and simple uh, future tense to show the result of that condition. Like uh, the example can be if I, you know, uh, see you, if I see you uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, a comma for the separation of the sentence because the F clause is used in the beginning and the result will be produced using the simple future tense in the first conditional. All these conditional sentences are used for specific purposes. You cannot use the sentences from your own, uh, the, the grammars, the, the tenses. If you see me tomorrow, I'll give you, you know, my number. The sentence, the condition is that if I see you, if I see you tomorrow, I'll give you my number. If I do not see you tomorrow, no result for the future. The result comes when, once the condition happens actually. There is a possibility, I hope, that for the, uh, to, in the future, it means tomorrow, I might see you. Once I see you, the result will be over that I'll give you my, uh, you know, number. And the, the second conditional, the second conditional is known to be the unreal conditional, talking about the present and the future. We say that the future here in the first condition was real, the future in the second condition is unreal. If I, once I explain that, you will come to know the difference between the second and the first condition. But first, uh, let me raise the board and have the free space for writing more examples for you. Okay, the example of the second conditional, you know, is used to talk about the hypothetical uh, situations in the present and in the future. Uh, the second conditional, uh, the example of this can be that uh, if I won the lottery, if I won the lottery, this is the condition, the result will be produced after this comma. I would buy my favorite car. Now keep in mind, the example, the sentence which I wrote here is in simple past tense. The second sentence is used in simple future in the past tense. For some of the students that they know say future in the past tense, keep in mind that the difference of the simple future in the past tense with the conditional sentence is absolutely, you know, discrepant. It, it's uh, absolutely vast. There is no, you know, similarity between simple future in the past and future, you know, the conditional sentences. Uh, when you check the books, the grammar books of some of the institutions, they wrote the conditional sentences to be the uh, future and the past tenses. But there is a big difference. Inshallah, we'll cover, we'll cover all those lectures in the upcoming videos. Uh, if I won the lottery, in this example, I am not talking about the past, but talking about the present or talking about the future. If I won, uh, I do not have the lottery ticket right now. I am only dreaming, means it's a vision, it's an imaginary situation. I do not have the lottery ticket. For, for the one who doesn't have the lottery ticket, how is it possible for him to win the lottery? This one, I use the second I use the second form of a verb, the second form of the verb of win. I use the second cause, I do not have the lottery, it means I'm only dreaming about the future. If I won someday, I would buy my favorite car. This word is used instead of will. If I, once again, change this one to win, and if I change this word to will, I will have the first condition. And the difference of the first condition and the second condition is in the translation, look at this one. If I win the lottery here, I have the lottery ticket in my pocket and I hope it's possible for me, it's absolutely likely situation to the future, uh, I can win the lottery. I might win the lottery or I might lose the lottery, but it's I have the lottery, I have the ticket with myself. Here in this example, I do not have it, but I only dream about the future. I, and the result might be real, the result because I, I have the ticket, I have the ticket and there is a possibility for the future that if I win it, the result might occur that I will buy my favorite car. I hope you understood that one as well. And let's come to the you know, third conditional. How about the present uh, translation of the second conditional? It's, I can make an example that if I grieve wings, it's impossible for me to grow the wings, but I'm talking about the present, that if I grieve wings, I would fly all over the world. This is the example of the present you know, conditional and second form, and the second condition of the present situation. 
The third conditional is also an unreal conditional. It's uh, you know talk about the past. Why do we call it unreal? It's absolutely obvious. It's clear ostensibly that uh, it's the past. We cannot go back to the past. The past is gone. It's over. This one we can call that to be the unreal. It's unreal cause I'm only dreaming. It's the unreal cause. It's gone. The past is gone, and we cannot go back to the past uh, to change the situation to reform the actions. For example, let me raise the board first. Then I'll. Write the example here. Look at the example of the third conditional. The third condition can have an example uh, the same way. For the formation, we use past perfect tense in F class and future in the past perfect tense to produce the result of the, the third conditional. Uh, we have to make an example if I had won the not read the comma for the separation of the sentences. I would have bought. I would have bought. You know my favorite car. In this example, I'm talking about the past. The translation has to be the past. I use the past perfect tense here and I use future in the past perfect tense here as a reminder that I will teach you future in the past tenses in full details. Keep in mind that it's future in the past perfect tense and no one can ignore it. I had to, if I had won the lottery, I really want to convey the message that in the past I had the lottery, it was possible to me in the past to win the lottery, I really wanted to win the lottery, but once they announced the result, I missed my ticket in only one number. You know that the, the one who was next to me, after me won the lottery, I lost the lottery. And I really wanted in the past, once I won the I, I wanted to, just once I won the lottery, I would I would buy my favorite car. But I lost the lottery, this why I only make example with the help of future in the past perfect tense to have the remorse in the prison. I cannot go back to the past to be the winner of the lottery ticket. And I cannot go back to the past after winning the lottery ticket to buy the favorite car of mine. So I have to make example in this manner using the two perfect tenses. But keep in mind that the third condition can be used. They can be made uh, can be made uh, very formal. The very formal form of the third condition is that to remove if from the sentence. You know the if uh, and the swap hat with the subject of your sentence. If you wanna make it very formal, you have to remove if from the sentence. Swap means change hat with the uh, subject of your sentence, whatever the subject may be. That if I say like that, look at the example. Had I won the lottery, I would have bought my favorite car. Had I won the lottery, I would have bought the car. Is the same sentence. If I had won the lottery, I would have bought the car. But in a very formal translation, and you know, it's also not informal. But uh, in comparison to this sentence, it's a bit informal. Now, next conditions. The last form of the condition that I want to talk about is the mixed condition. Once again, as a reminder, before I talk about the mixed conditionals, I have to tell you uh, the definition of the second condition and the third condition. The second condition was used to talk about the hypothetical uh, situations in the present or in the future, and the third condition was used to talk about the hypothetical situations in the past. So the mixed conditionals are used to talk about the hypothetical present results of the unreal past situation. What are the mixed conditions? Are used to talk about the hypothetical present result. Why the present result is a hypothetical? Because the you know the situation was in the past. The situation is in the past and it's unreal. Was the unreal situation is in the past and the sentence the, the, the sentence the result is in the present. So we say that the result itself has to be a hypothesis. It's a hypothetical. For example, the example of this conditional can be uh, let's use the black marker. Okay. Uh, if you hadn't, if you hadn't forgotten the keys, if you hadn't forgotten the keys, a comma for the separation of the two sentences, uh, we wouldn't be locked outside. You wouldn't be locked outside. Look at example. If you hadn't forgotten the keys, do you see the past perfect tense along with the third form of a verb? And the second sentence, the result which comes afterwards, is, is used is, is, is made in simple feature in the past tense. 
But uh, don't be deceived, it's not the past feature of the past verb. It's feature of the past tense and it's used in the passive form. It's not the active way. Would be is the auxiliary, it's negative form. Would it be? You wouldn't be locked outside. What happens is that you forgot the keys in the past and we are locked here behind the door in the prison. Can you go back to the past to bring the keys? No, you need the future to go back to the, you know, uh, to go back home and to bring the keys. So we wouldn't be locked here. We wouldn't be locked here. If you hadn't forgotten, means you forgot about it in the past, and we are already locked here in the present. The present situation is a hypothesis, means hypothetical situation, because we are already locked, and you, the action remained in the past. You cannot go back to the past. The past is. Uh, by itself, it's the unreal. And inshallah, I will go to other uh, lectures about the future and the past tenses in upcoming videos. But keep in mind, uh, the conditional sentences are more than these. It was the, the time was absolutely short, and I've been given the short time. I hope I covered all aspects of the future uh, the conditional sentences. Wish to see you back.